Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you advice on creating comic books or graphic novels or manga, whatever project it is that you want to make. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a scene from my graphic novel, The Drawing Lesson. I'm going to let you experience it as a reader and then I'm going to go back and uh, go through it bit by bit and tell you all the different sort of decisions that I made, pull back the curtain on the whole process. Uh, of how books like this are made. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into the scene. Tall caramel macchiato, light on the whipped cream. Thanks. Fumph. Ah. Becky! It's me, David. Remember? Hey, David, what are you doing here? My mom works at the bookstore on the other side of the mall. I'm here almost every day. Look, I've got to show you all the stuff I've been drawing. I'm getting better, I think. Wow, you've been busy. Yeah. I used to play video games and stuff, but now all I do is draw. Not bad, David. Some of these are pretty nice. Can you give me another drawing lesson? Right now? Yeah, right now! Okay, today I'm going to teach you about shading. Last week, when I had you draw my wristwatch, it was just a line drawing. I didn't ask you to add any shading to the watch strap, we just left that area as the white of the page. This time I'm going to have you draw... hmm... this pillow. It doesn't have any fancy pattern on it, so that simplifies things for you. First I want you to draw the basic outlines of it, then I'll show you a way to add shading. That's right. Keep looking at the pillow. Keep checking to make sure your drawing matches it. Nice, David. Very nice. I can tell you've been practicing. You got the shape right and the blank spaces. Thanks, but don't you think drawing a pillow is kind of boring? I want to learn how to draw cool stuff, like a Ferrari. David, I am not going to teach you how to draw a Ferrari. But more important, this isn't a lesson about how to draw a pillow. It's about how to add shading to a drawing. Any drawing. Now, before we get started, I want to show you how I hold my pencil in different ways to produce different types of lines. When my goal is precision, I hold the pencil near the tip. This helps me get very tight control over the line placement. But when it's time to add shading, I may hold the pencil farther back and at a lower angle to the page. See? This allows me to make long, smooth lines, one after the other. It's hard to make lines like this when you're holding the pencil down near the tip. So before you even work on the pillow drawing, why don't you practice a little, making lines like I just made? Shik, shik. Try moving the pencil quicker. When you move the pencil slowly, you tend to get wobbly lines. If you move the pencil quickly, the lines will be smoother. There you go. Much better. Now, I want you to use lines like that for shading the pillow. Do your best to build up an even tone so that the pillow looks like it's a single solid color. Okay, let's see how it looks so far. Well done, David. Really nice for a first try. It's good, isn't it? Just you wait. I'm going to be better than Ryan Pasternak. Is that what this is all about for you? Being better than some kid at school? Um, maybe? Art isn't a contest, David. I'm trying to teach you the pleasure of drawing well. If you're doing this just to beat someone at something, then you better go find another teacher. You got that? Yeah. Good. Then let's keep going. All right, well, the chapter continues after that for another few pages, but I think we have enough to sort of stop and analyze things. I want to help you understand the different decisions that I made as I crafted this scene. Now, one of the first decisions you have to make as a comic book storyteller is, you know, what do you put in the first panel? How do you begin the scene? Well, very often you do uh, an establishing shot, and that's exactly what we do here. Uh, we show that the following scene is going to take place uh, at the mall, or more precisely, uh, in a coffee sh coffee shop at the mall, Storbex Coffee. <laughs> Too bad it doesn't happen in gouache. My very favorite store at the mall. Uh, but yeah, giving a little bit of an aerial view, we show this character Becky 
heading into uh, the coffee shop. It is not a, an accident that her the hair, the darkness of her hair is maybe the darkest thing in this picture. It calls attention, uh, you know, certainly compared to this character. It helps us focus on her. Uh, and uh, basically what I'm doing here is trying to set up a little bit of a comedic moment. Um, you know, I, I had a project here where I knew I was going to have a teacher, I was going to have a student, and uh, I was uh, very worried that the story would end up being just a series of lessons and not an actual uh, story that, in which we believe in these characters and, and uh, are reading about them as a real narrative. And so I established this idea that Becky uh, is a reluctant teacher, someone who didn't really want to teach anybody, but she's sort of pushed into it by this boy, David. So, this whole thing is about setting up, you know, uh, maybe it's Saturday afternoon and Becky goes into her local uh, coffee shop. She's going to kick back with her book and just relax. And then, sure enough, here at the page turn, which is where I like to put little moments of mystery, we have Becky! Uh, and we don't know. Who is it? Who's saying the word Becky? Well, you don't find out until you get to the next page, and uh, that's a classic technique of uh, uh, layouts. Uh, put, the, put your surprise on the other side of the page turn. And uh, notice how I uh, uh, tried to have the entryway have a somewhat distinctive look to it with all these lines here. Well, that echoes back to here. Helps us to understand um, where the door is, where the sofa is, uh, and um, uh, just want the reader to feel, not to feel disoriented or sort of wonder where the different characters are. Um, very important, I feel, to, to give them a sort of a mental map of the scene. Now, after this, um, I wanted at least a, a part where we see how dedicated uh, David is, and this is maybe part of how he wins her over, uh, that he is taking her lessons to heart and really practicing, and uh, that's what gets you know, gets her on his side, uh, even though, as I said, she's <laughs> very reluctant, as we see here, and this is maybe a moment of comedy here, as David is sort of like, can you give me another drawing lesson? And he, his face is completely innocent and happy, and he has no sense of what he's doing to her. Uh, of course, the look on her face changes from one of like, huh? <laughs> to, uh, you know, curving the eyebrows a little right now. Uh, and um, as we read it, we, the uh, grown-up people reading it, sort of identify with her and understand, oh, she was just about to just have a relaxing moment to herself. And then uh, pulling back here, this is sort of an, another comedic technique. Very often when you want... Um, uh, the reader to, to sort of view something in a comedic way. You pull back from a distance and for, for some reason uh, I guess the classic line is uh, about movies that it's it's a tragedy in close-up and a comedy in a long shot. Uh, probably not true in all circumstances but somehow by pulling way back and we see just the sigh we have a certain there's just a certain tone and, and a feeling that this part has ended, we have reached the end of this mini scene and now we launch into uh, the actual lesson. And um, you know here, even here, we have the table because that's going to come in uh, later on where she t sets this pillow on the table. We, we want to make sure that the reader is always aware of where the different things are uh, and never feels uh, that something has popped up suddenly out of nowhere. Um, uh, the choice of the pillow, in a way, is the driving choice of the scene's location. Uh, I was trying to think of what would be a good object for uh, uh, David to practice learning about drawing surfaces, and I thought, well, a pillow like this has a sort of a gentle curving surface, and we can get into these gently curving lines. Well, where am I going to find a pillow? Oh, probably in a coffee shop. And so, in a way, it's all reverse engineering. This choice of coffee shop is maybe determined by the pillow, uh, believe it or not. Uh, coming up with the object uh, that uh, uh, she's going to use for her teaching, uh, that might have really been what uh, led us to this coffee shop scene. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of comic book storytelling is reverse engineering. You, you know what you want to do and then you come up with the thing that allows you to do that. Um, notice the combination uh, of uh, we show the drawing, we show his face, and then we show the drawing again, having progressed a little. To me, this helps sort of stretch the time a little, gives a sense uh, of three or four minutes passing by. Um, a lot of things, like even this, I think that this empty uh, page here 
uh, or panel where there's no talking, that also has a feeling of passing time. It's you know, it's just this has a certain duration to it. This seems to be to take a little longer, you know, to suggest passing time. When you when you remove the dialogue uh, and just show a scene like that of uh, uh, of a picture uh, without any words, it seems like it takes more time or it suggests that time has passed. Now this here is an, another sort of moment of comedy where he's like, I don't want to draw pillows, I want to draw a Ferrari, you know. And it seems like it's uh, kind of just a uh, comic relief, but it is sort of leading to a message that is to the reader, not just to David, the message about, you know, this lesson is not about drawing a pillow, it's about adding shading to a drawing, any drawing. And in a way that's the sort of philosophy of the whole book. Um, I'm not teaching you how to draw one particular thing. I'm giving you the fundamentals, or at least I'm trying to, giving you the fundamentals that you can apply to drawing in general. Um, and uh, here we see the holding the pencil at a certain angle. You've probably heard me talk about this in my videos. It became a, a challenge to show this in comic book form. It's easy to show in video form. A little more challenging to show in comic book form. I had to come over here and show the different angles. I had to suggest by way of sound effects the speed. You know, the sort of sh -sh -sh -sh. It's, she's moving the pencil quickly. I can't show the speed. I have to sort of suggest it here by making the sound effect longer. Sh -sh -sh. We have a sense that maybe he's not moving his pencil as quickly as she is and that's why he's not getting the smooth uh, lines. There are, you know, certain limitations to graphic novels, what you can show and what you can't show. You, there is no audi audio component, so you're always having to suggest audio by way of uh, sound effect words, but yeah, you know me. I love graphic novels and I think there is, there's magic in the combination of words and pictures that is uh, unlike any other uh, art form. Uh, we see another panel here of uh, no words, just uh, visual storytelling. Again, to me it sort of stretches time. It makes us feel that time is going by as David begins. Uh, and again, here's the same pattern of the panel, his face, the panel again, helping again to sort of stretch time out, give us a sense of uh, him continuing to work on this thing. Um, and here uh, really is a conflict. There are two different points in this uh, scene where I would say conflict um, makes the story more interesting. Um, the first one is more purely uh, comedic. I don't know if you would even call it conflict, but this part where uh, she says, uh, right now, yeah, you really want me to, you know, this is the sort of the comedy moment of uh, she doesn't want to teach him, he does want her to teach him, and she sort of gives in. There's sort of uh, using conflict uh, or mild conflict to comedic effect. Now here uh, we have conflict that becomes a little more serious. In fact, maybe it's the the most, uh, you know, bold conflict between the two of them that we see in the whole story. And that is when uh, David says that he wants to be, you know, I'm going to be better than Ryan Pasternak. And he sort of reveals uh, accidentally his uh, goal to beat out some other kid at school. And uh, we see um, Becky's reaction to that. Um, I would say even though it's a cartoony face, fairly serious looking, she, her look of disapproval, and at this point it becomes a little bit, you know, I don't want to say heavy, but uh, um, you can see that she's not pleased with his motivations uh, about, you know, trying to learn how to draw better so that he can rub it in someone's face or surpass somebody else. Those of you who've watched my videos, you know that this is a topic near and dear to my heart. This idea of, you know, comparing yourself to other people um, can be uh, demoralizing. Uh, and then in this case, it's sort of like having the goal of beating somebody at something. Uh, you know, I would say in sports or whatever, that's fine. In art, it, I, don't, I don't know. It, it certainly goes against my philosophy. Try to beat yourself. Try to be better than you used to be. Uh, having the goal of surpassing some other person uh, does not seem to be a very lofty goal to me. And so that's why I worked in this point and, and, at which Becky kind of becomes my, you know, a mouthpiece for Mark Crilly putting across this uh, message uh, to David and then also to uh, the audience in general. Um, you know, this art isn't a contest.
I'm trying to teach you the pleasure of drawing well. And uh, in a way, this was my goal with this book, is that I didn't want this to just be a series of drawing lessons. It also becomes sort of almost moral lessons, some of them, with um, uh, Becky uh, uh, serving as, as a true mentor, not just someone teaching a bunch of skills, but someone teaching a philosophy, in a way. And uh, so that's where you see there's a little break from the drawing lesson to, to have more of a spiritual lesson in a way. And she almost threatens him, you know. She says, if you're doing this just to beat somebody out, uh, to surpass some other person, you better find another teacher. Almost sort of like, I'm not going to keep teaching you if this is... Uh, if your goal is just to humiliate some other guy uh, or to feel cool about yourself because everyone at school says you're better than Ryan Pasternak. And basically she, you know, <laughs> she puts him in his place and uh, in this one uh, scene here, the look on his face, you can see that he's, he's kind of backing down and maybe going to do some soul searching uh, about... Uh, about his goal. It'll be interesting maybe even in the comments section of this video people may find. I know that some people find that uh, you know a uh, competitive spirit against another person can help you get better. There can be a friendly rivalry. Uh, maybe that's not the kind of thing that I'm talking about here. Uh, in any case, uh, for better or for worse, that became part of uh, this scene and uh, as you can see it, it, it continues from there and goes back into the um, the eventual goal of the lesson which is to show how shading um, can be used to uh, suggest the surface uh, of uh, any object, again, not just a pillow. But anyway, that kind of brings us uh, to the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found it useful. I know that uh, uh, people normally want to see me do a, uh, a how to draw a lesson, but I do have a whole series of videos that are kind of like this one, uh, pulling back the curtain, giving you uh, information about uh, the creative process behind comics. And I will go ahead and link to that uh, playlist. There's a lot of videos now uh, for those of you who are you know, wanting to create comics yourself or just gain a deeper appreciation of the comic creation process. Uh, I would urge you to check out that playlist and uh, scroll through it, find the ones that seem most interesting to you. Uh, they really do contain, you know, basically everything I know. Uh, about comics, everything that I've learned uh, from making them uh, over the years, going all the way back to 1995. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and wind this video down. Uh, next week I'll be back with a, a, a how to draw type of video, the kind of thing that people are accustomed to seeing from me, but for now I just want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.